Hello, it's uh, nice to have this opportunity to communicate with you on this 2020 medium of providing videos. I hope this is going to be insightful and helpful for you. I reflect back that uh, I marched in uh, Kennedy's inauguration as a young teenager in a military, from one of the military academies, and how cold and bitter it was that day and how wet and sloppy my feet were because it snowed that day. And it's almost the same kind of situation we have now. People feel like they're lost in the crazy weather they don't normally see, uh, yet uh, that's where we are. I am gonna cover some reflections of that time period, uh, some of which I was just a, a person on your side of the page and most of that time where I've been a professionally licensed person. These are my views from observing things over a long period of time and experiencing them with a number of different people. They are from sources we believe reliable, though we can't guarantee them. I want to particularly thank our friends at J.P. Morgan and City National Rockdale because they provided some of the slides that we're going to talk about to you. And I'm going to cover a number of different things. First are equities. Uh, we're going to use S&P 500 as an example. And again, those need a long view when you deal with equities. Secondly, we have to realize that we manage risk. We don't escape risk. So I want to uh, make sure we cover that. I'm going to uh, also cover a number of different assets. And remember, assets are where you store wealth for a future lifestyle. And for equities, we try to make you think about those being at least five years and that you want a horizon of probably 20 years or more before you're tapping into some of those things. Now, um, there are, I'm going to start with also discussing inflection points. The market goes somewhat like a roller coaster over periods of time. Also, I'm going to use the uh, example of riding in a, a car up in the hill country and how we take roads and et cetera like that, that uh, uh, we, because uh, a lot of us I'm sure have lived through that type of thing. Uh, we're also then gonna take a step back from 2010 to 2019, and then we're gonna take a step even further back from 2005 to 2019 and see what happened. And then I want you to keep in mind that if you lose 50% in the market or at someplace else, You've got to earn 100% to get back to where you were when the loss started. So we want to try to avoid that. And again, that's the idea of managing risk. Um, and finally, we're going to uh, uh, consider that it's not just about returns. We're going to talk about risk. And uh, I'm going to also do a slide, a presentation on risk budget with you as a separate uh, piece. Uh, and we're going to talk about accountability I mean, rather accessibility and taxes. Um, and then if you wish, we can talk about your unique situation because this is just general in nature for educational purposes only. So here we go. We believe everybody needs to know how money works. We want people to make good decisions once they have clarity about their money. And working together, our desire is to provide confidence for every financial decision you make. Again, I use this county road. How many of you, I can't ask you to raise your hands, but I'll raise my hand, uh, went a little tight in some of these turns uh, that the speed limit was posted and we said, oh, we don't need to go that slow. That's what I think happened in here starting in February of 2020. We're coming into these curves and a great big truck that we couldn't even see was coming around and they were pushing over on this side of the road. So we got pushed over onto some of the dirt and stuff as we came around that curve and headed right down into the valley. And we are now down in that valley and looking back up and we could see places in the roads and that's what I'm gonna be talking about, but we can't see the, the peak or where we crest over the top of the mountain back over here someplace, it's not in the picture. So let's talk about inflection points with the S&P 500. You can see back in 96, it had a nice run through 99, and then it fell off 49%. Remember I said 
uh, decline. Um, and that occurred through 2002. That was the bust of the dot coms mostly. Then you, starting in 2002, you had a very nice run through uh, uh, early 2008, and most of us uh, were around and remember what happened in 2008. That was a 57% decline. And then starting in uh, March 9th, 2009, you've had a pretty much a straight run. Uh, again, you had some dips over here in 15 and 16, but you had pretty much a straight run, and then bam, the first quarter of um, 2020, we had a 24% decline. And you can see that's very sudden and very steep that has occurred during this period of time. And you don't want to be having to access money when it's down 24%. You want to be accessing money and putting it aside for places you can get to it when you're having these kind of upward uh, biases in the market. Now, this is a lot of material. I'm only going to focus up here on this because a lot of people don't realize the S&P 500 is largely uh, a large cap stock in various sectors. And these are all the sectors that uh, are involved and make up the S&P 500. I'm only going to talk about a, a two or three of them to make it easy for you. In the first quarter of 2020, and those of us based in Houston know this, energy dropped 50% as their segment of the market. So if you were an energy investor, you got hurt a lot. Financials, which include banks, dropped 32%. And again, I'm rounding these numbers. The only thing that uh, turned positive was, oops, nothing turned positive. Every segment was off from a high of 50 to a low of 12s in the healthcare and consumer staples. And that's where you go shopping for groceries, et cetera, like that. So in that quarter, the S&P 500 was off nearly 20% for the quarter. That is pretty uh, drastic, uh, and it would broke a record um, on it. Now, let's make it a tighter frame. Remember the arc that occurred from 2009 coming forward? We still had dips in there. Um, this is when the U.S. was downgraded for their um, credit worthiness and the market dropped 16%. Uh, the uh, European market had what was referred to as a double dip. That dropped almost 10%. We had a slowdown because of Ebola that occurred in here, that market dropped about 7%. I'm gonna jump over to this side here. Recent time, uh, the trade concerns in China and the rising interest rates that were occurring in 18, 2018, the market dropped 20%. And then again, the market decline that started in February, contributing to really three things. It was COVID-19 plus the oil decline plus the drastic drop in interest rates. So you really had a triple whammy that hit the market over here. You know, if I'm going too fast, I'd be happy to review this with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, we're happy to do a call with you because every person's situation is unique. Please feel free to contact us. We can either do it digitally. We are open because we're considered an essential business. We try to maintain social distancing, and uh, we'd be happy to talk to you about your circumstances. I thought this was also a good one because it says while uh, bear markets vary, they recover. They usually recover 50% quickly, and that's what I'm going to um, talk about is 50 and 100% recovery. And if you look over here, looking at different time frames, you're LBJ was president in 66, and that's when I started to get involved in the market. It took seven months to recover. Um, this was the oil crisis and the, and the lines for gas. Uh, this is when the Saudis and the Russians were, not, were on the same side. Now they're on opposite sides of the equation in energy. And that took 70 months to recover. Here in 2000 through 2002, to get back to 100%, uh, because we had such a decline for three years in a row, which is very rare, that took 60 months. And in 2007 through 2009, 
it took just shy of just over four years uh, to recover the market back to 100% of where you had been. And again, that presumes you are a 100% equity investor, which we never encourage people to do. This comes from Goldman Sachs. It's a study they do of what they call risk appetite. It basically takes the temperature of people that are investing and asks them, what is their feeling about the market? Are they positive or negative? Right now, we're at a minus two. That's as low as we can measure. And what has happened with performance in the next three months and the next 12 months, and then what is the subsequent return of the S&P 500? And again, past performance is no guarantee of the future, but at least gives us some indication. So within three months, you can see a 51% recovery. Within 12 months, a 91% recovery. And the subsequent return approaches 21% on uh, the S&P 500. So fear currently is at a historical high. And um, I think that that's just the nature of people that uh, are looking at only their circumstances and haven't looked at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different people. I, I've, I've probably worked with 20 to 30,000 people over my career and be happy to talk about yours uh, accordingly. I like this one because it gives me an indication of what's happening globally, because we live, and we did find out, we live in a global economy. Uh, starting about 2013, everybody's lawn was green, and it stayed mostly that way uh, through 2019, but in, here we are in February 2020. Look at all those red zones that are occurring, and all this red over here uh, that's, that's occurring, and particularly in March, uh, meaning that this is... The Purchase Manager's Index for Services. It basically says, what am I going to order or what am I going to get? Because you can look back here. Here's the 2008, 2009. Look at all those reds that were in there. And again, in 11 and 12 and 13, there were some of the countries, France, Italy, Spain, uh, were negative uh, as far as where they were in exchanging things. So this is just a heat chart that rapidly gives one a look of how the global economy is performing. This one is trying to give people examples. I call it the quilt. Uh, and what I want you to focus on are the, the best and worst performers over a 15-year time period. Uh, large caps, which represent the um, S&P 500 had the best return, but take a look at how it's bounced all around over that time period. So, in fact, here's at one point where it was off 17 percent, I'm sorry, off 37 percent in 2008. The, let's ju jump down in here and talk about uh, um, cash and commodities. Commodities actually have had a negative return of 2.5 six percent so you hear people talk about gold or silver or those kind of things um, they they are really a fear place and you can see a lot of times a lot of commodities are hanging up down way down here at the bottom of the pile even cash outperformed commodities and then there's a whole series of other ones now if you have an asset allocation this is a mix that was built discussed in here. I'm not going to go into the details. This mix over 15 years delivered a little over 6%, uh, again, before taxes and all the other costs that, that are involved in it, but it, it gives you sort of a target number with much lower volatility. See how much this is bunched inside here on this, this zone as opposed to being all over the place with different investments. So again, our goal is to have a mix of different assets where you're storing your wealth that are going to accomplish different things and function to act as shock absorbers in your car. Only your car is your financial vehicle that you're riding along. This is again, we'll talk a little bit about diversification. And again, it goes back to October of 2007, just before the, the decline. And then this is a baseline of starting with $100,000 what happened, and you'll see the S&P 500 started to pull ahead in 2014, but it also has had the biggest decline. 
So this line, which is an indication, it's not a recommendation, but it's an indication of having a 60% stock and a 40% bond type of allocation, you can see that they it actually did better from 2007 through uh, October, well actually, yeah, about, about October of 2016, the, the S&P started to pull away from it a little bit. But it also, they all came here and about have kissed each other. And then um, if you have a 40% stocks and 60% bonds, so you're more conservative, you'll notice this line is more consistent. But again, you're, you're not chasing returns. You are trying to uh, maintain very low volatility. You're trying to manage that risk you don't like drastic swings in the value of your statement. Now, the government says that uh, if you're in your mid-60s and you're retired, you're probably going to live about 20 years. So this is a time period of 1999 through 2019. And uh, different assets performed differently. I want you to focus on these two because a 60-40 split delivered a 5.6% return a 40-60 split delivered a 5.4% return. This happened to be a great time for bonds because interest rates for the, most of that period have been coming down, delivered a 5% return. And then there's others in here that, again, I'm not gonna get into the great detail of it. Be happy to discuss it with you if you wanna come in and have a conversation with us. Finally, I wanna close with this thought. You got to think about not only risk, and again, I'm going to do a risk budget one separately that we'll talk about this, but also the taxation. You know, we, there's another axis on everything that we've discussed here, but we never talked about the impact of taxes when we're looking at some of those numbers. So you got to really look at taxes, and particularly with the fact that our debt in our country now has been increased dramatically. Um, if we had uh, 2.2 million stacked up in $1,000 bills, and they no longer have, have them in circulation, but it's an easy example to grasp. You would have about a two and a quarter inch pile of, of bills. And I can remember when a million dollars was a lot of money. But Congress passed a $2.2 trillion uh, deficit addition to send out. And I think it was the right thing to do where we are because we had such a dramatic thing. I'm not faulting them. but. 2.2 trillion stacked in thousand dollar bills is almost 140 miles high. That's a long way. That's halfway to, to Dallas or more, uh, as an example, or or all over over into Louisiana or just about to San Antonio from Houston. That's a long, long way of stacked dollars. And they're still talking about another one to two trillion of what they're calling number four. So you got to think about taxes because. Those deficits are tax money that have not been collected yet. It's against future income. And then finally, accessibility. I just had a conversation yesterday with a good client of ours. He has cash. We thought about, did we want to try and put some of it in the market? But when we looked at his obligations for the next several months, we realized most of that money is already committed and he had very little to put away. So even though you've got cash, trying to invest for just a couple of months in the stock market is extremely dangerous. It's like going to the Las Vegas and betting on individual numbers in the roulette wheel. It's a challenge to come out right, and very few come out right. The house is always going to win uh, in those kind of circumstances. I hope this has been helpful for you. This is our contact information. If you want to have a conversation, we are available. We thank you very much. I hope that everybody in your family is healthy and doing fine in this uh, period of time.